Even while President Johnson talked to Chancellor Klaus about America's responsibility in a time of crisis and challenge, word came from Capitol Hill that Congress had passed and sent to the White House the Civil Rights Act of 1968. Included in the measure was a landmark open housing bill, which, when fully effective, would forbid discrimination in approximately 80% of all housing offered for rent or for sale in the United States. We all know that the roots of injustice run deep. But violence cannot redress a solitary wrong or remedy a single unfairness. And we just must put our shoulders together and put a stop to both. The time is here. Action must be now. TV. My name is Eric Frazier, and I'm the president and CEO. April is Fair Housing Month, and the Powers Now is conducting a series of interviews uh, to talk about fair housing, the importance of the 1968 Fair Housing Act, and what it means to minorities, what it should mean to really everyone that desires to achieve the American dream. Now, we began this series last year. And you can go to our website at thepowersnow.com and find under the menu bar, the 2021 series. And there I had the opportunity to interview industry leaders across all areas. And our attempt is to do that again today. We're gonna to be interviewing industry leaders, community leaders to talk about uh, the importance of fair housing, uh, the night, their experience with fair housing, uh, the law itself, the 1968 Fair Housing Act, and this will be the class of 2022. And so every year, we're going to be uh, celebrating and analyzing the 1968 Fair Housing Act. Is it making a difference uh, in fair housing? You know, are things improving uh, in fair housing? Uh, is it impacting the bottom line? And that is the homeownership rate of minorities. Uh, these are the questions we're going to uh, explore. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with the 1968 Fair Housing Act, uh, it came into existence on April 11th, 1968, only after a long battle. I mean, it was a long and difficult uh, journey uh, to get this uh, legislation signed into office by President uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, 50 four years ago. And so the question we're asking is, has conditions changed or improved since the passing of the 1968 Fair Housing Act? Well, here's one uh, stat I can share with you, and that is the rate of homeownership uh, for African Americans has not improved since the passing of the act. And since then, there has been evidence and there has been lawsuits uh, and news articles that further demonstrate that things have not improved as it relates to housing discrimination. And for that matter, with the whole Black Lives, Black Lives Matter movement, we can see that things have not improved as it relates to race relations anyway. And so it doesn't surprise any of us if that pours into housing discrimination. And so the Fair Housing Act is a, is a very, very important piece of legislation. And it was only born out of the Civil Rights Act, uh, which Dr. Martin Luther King gave up his life, 1964 uh, Civil Rights Act. And you know, many people have shed blood uh, to have uh, for us today to enjoy the freedoms we enjoy today, to be able to live where we wanna live, to be able to buy what we wanna buy, to be able to have the jobs we wanna have, and 
we all stand on the shoulders of men and women who have sacrificed their lives to make freedom a reality and home ownership a reality for everyone. And so Title uh, Eight of the 1968 Fair Housing Act was amended to prohibit discrimination and the state uh, and all states, all this is federal law, not just California where we're based, but in the area of sale, rental, financing of dwellings, other housing related transactions because of race, color, religion, sex, familial status, national origin, and disability. So the Fair Housing Act was subject to contentious debate, and I don't know why. Uh, what is there to debate? You know, but there was contentious debate. It almost didn't pass. Many believe that it wouldn't have passed if it wasn't for the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. He gave his life for civil rights, and that, I believe, was the precursor uh, to um, Lyndon B. Johnson signing the bill into law. And so here are some of the questions that we're going to be asking our guests on this series. Number one, we're going to ask them, what is the mission and, and purpose of their organization? What are they doing to further fair housing, to protect and to ensure that their members or employees are uh, not violating the law? What are some of the success stories they can share uh, that is going on in their organization uh, as it relates to fair housing? Uh, we're going to talk about whether we even need a Fair Housing Act today. There are many who believe we don't not, we don't need a Fair Housing Act, just like we don't need a minority trade associations, and we don't need any really uh, social legislation. They believe that uh, there is no racism. I mean, there are people who actually believe that, uh, and um, and and just don't want to see anything change. Uh, they want to rely, uh, just leave it up to people to do what is right. And we uh, see how that's worked out. You know, people don't do what is right. We need laws to ensure that people do what is right. And when they don't do, uh, then uh, persecution by the law is required, you know. And that's another issue here. Is the Fair Housing Act of 1968, is it enforceable? What can we what can we do to put more teeth uh, behind this law to ensure that there is compliance? So there's a lot to talk about in this series, and I certainly hope you will watch this series. We've invited leaders across the country from housing counseling agencies to, to major corporations and to trade associations and, and community leaders, from pastors to uh, those who are in, in the legislative bodies. Uh, so we've made the invitation. Uh, they are coming. And, and so look at our schedule. It'll be posted in our magazine, the Powers Now television magazine each week, uh, who's coming up. And um, you'll be able to see it on our website. It'll be playing 24 seven on the Powers Now TV on our website. Please download our TV app. Uh, you can find that under Power Is Now TV on your Android or iPhone. Uh, please uh, find us on Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. Those are other platforms and many more to come. The Power Is Now is leading the conversation in real estate. We really are. We're leading the conversation in real estate. Our goal is to empower you with information, tools, resources to educate you, to make homeownership a reality, and we certainly hope that you will follow us, you'll like us, you'll subscribe to our magazines, that you will stay engaged with the powers now as we assist you in your journey to homeownership and building wealth in real estate. Thank you for uh, participating in last year's series. Please share it with others, and please give us your feedback on this year's series as it unfolds here in the month of April. Happy 1968 Fair Housing Month to all of you. See you soon.